This is Sound Noise Acoustics Engineering Podcast, episode number 10, brought to you by Sound Solutions, an independent acoustical consulting firm at ssacoustical.com. This podcast is here to provide you with knowledge and resources to address acoustical issues. I'm Bill Holiday. Thank you for joining me on this episode. I'm going to be talking about sound transmission class and improving 10 ways to improve the sound transmission class or the sound isolation provided by a wall to isolate two rooms. All right, number one, extend that wall to the structure. So in open office spaces, a lot of times walls are only extended to the acoustic ceiling tiles. At least at a minimum, extend it through the acoustic ceiling tiles so that you have the acoustic ceiling tile path, you have the wall path, but you're not dealing with a gap between the, the wall and the ceiling. As I said on the previous podcast about sound walls, any gaps really hurt the effectiveness of a barrier. So if you have, if you can see light in your barrier from one side to the other, there's an acoustic leak and it's going to hurt your performance. So extend that through the ceiling and then, and then you can start treating the ceiling as a separate source. You can start looking at that path through the, if there's open registers, return air grills for some kind of plenum return. You could put lined boots. You could put fiberglass on either side of the wall above the ceiling. But we're dealing with the ceiling path and the wall path and not some little shortcut where it's not extended. Seal, no, so number two, seal all perimeter, all penetrations with non-hardening caulk. So don't allow any gaps in the wall. And even if you do multiple layers of drywall, each layer you should mud and tape. Seal those seams so that it's one continuous solid uh, barrier. At the walls, we use non-hardening caulk so that it's not going to crack and leave a gap. As, as the drywall heats and expands and contracts in the cold, it, sometimes it could leave some cracking and that would jeopardize that opening. Also around penetrations, if there's a pipe going through or a duct going through, non-hardening caulk will allow for expansion and contraction and won't fracture that, leave a crack with a, a gap. So non-hardening caulk, seal all gaps, that's really the bottom line. Receptacle boxes should not be located back to back on opposite sides of the wall. That'll provide a weak link, a weak path, and it'll uh, hurt, harm your, reduce the sound transmission class or the sound isolation provided by that wall. Adding acoustical absorption, number four, adding acoustical absorption to the air cavity, that provides about a five point increase in the STC. That's a clearly noticeable increase in STC. Just Fiberglass bats is fine. You don't want to overpack it or you start bridging the two surfaces. Um, there are different types of insulation that can be used. Acoustically, they're not all that different. If they're acoustically absorptive, if you use cotton or uh, some wool fibers or mineral rock or some, some different mineral wool or some different absorptive material, uh, just acoustically absorptive, pink, roll-on fiberglass is fine. Keep the paper towards the walls. If you have dual studs or if you have two rolls of fiberglass, you want the paper away from the center. So barriers are most effective with a large air gap, insulation in there, and the mass on the outsides. So we don't want to put, ideally, sometimes for fire codes you have to, but ideally you want to keep the fiber, keep the drywall to the outsides. Nothing in the middle, leave a big gap in the middle. And if you can decouple the two walls, that's even better. So we'll go through those. Number four, add absorption. Number five, if you double the layers of drywall on one side of a wall, 
you get about a three point increase. Double the mass on one side of a, of a wall system, about a three point increase. And let me just go over that uh, one point or one decibel increase or decrease is barely noticeable. Three, actually, a one point, one decibel increase or decrease is not noticeable. Three is barely noticeable. Six is clearly noticeable. And ten is doubling or halving. So really, five, six, and up, you're getting some clearly noticeable changes. So just putting one layer of drywall or one extra layer uh, is going to provide hardly noticeable difference. Probably not worth the effort in, in many cases. Now doubling gives you three. So if you have two already, you'd need to put two more to get that three or four more to get that three, depending on what's there. If you double the layers, this is number six, on both sides of a system, you get a five point increase. If you double, this is number seven, the air cavity in the wall. If you double that gap, use six inch instead of three inch studs, or double that air cavity, you get a five point increase. So five for insulation, three for doubling it on one side, five for doubling the mass on both sides, five for doubling that air cavity. If you go from single studs to staggered studs, you get about a 10 dB increase, or a 10 STC point increase, sorry, 10 dB reduction. Uh, or the, the sound transmission class will improve by 10. It'll be 10 dB quieter on the other side. Now this is frequency dependent, depends on what your noise source is. STC is really a classification for speech. So that's what we're talking about is speech. You'd get a significant, you'd cut it in half if you go from single studs to staggered studs. And you even get more improvement if you go to dual studs. Because that's a physical, that's a separation. You're not sharing the bottom, that footer plate. You are, you have two independent systems that are not touching. That will even give you a larger reduction. Resilient channels, putting those on one side, about a five point increase of the STC, on both sides about ten point increase. Now you gotta be careful with the resilient channels. These are these metal channels. You attach the channels to the studs and then you attach your drywall to the channels. You don't attach your drywall to the studs or you short out the system. The idea is to provide a springy system between the drywall and the studs. And that will improve the transmission class. The problem is if you have cabinets and you mount directly to the studs, you've just shorted them out. They're not going to be useful. If you slam that furniture against it, push it hard against it, you can short out those channels. They need to be installed properly. You don't want people who attach them or, or attach the drywall to the studs and short it out. You need to take care with those. Um, they're not my favorite solution just because there's room for error. We even see error with dual studs. There's spacer plates that people forget to remove before they put on the drywall. This, there's even more potential for error. But it can give significant reduction. So as with that ceiling path, that flanking path, you got to consider all the paths. So if you're looking at two rooms and they share an HVAC system, they share supply ducts, and you have that same duct with two supply grills there, or diffusers, you know, that can be a path. If you have a window or doors, that could be the weak link. And so doing crazy great work on the walls, making dual studs, um, will not help you if we're dealing with another weakness in that path. It could be wasted effort. So look at all the possible paths, flanking paths, HVAC, um, ceiling, floor, doors, windows. What, what could be another path before you start improving it? Because this 
the, the noise that you hear on the other side will be driven by the weakest path. Uh, I just wanted to say a couple things about STC, sound transmission class. The STC, it's a single number and it addresses noise sources like TVs, stereos, human speech. Not, not as much stereos actually, not as much low frequency thrump, throbbing, uh, bass. It's more speech, uh, level. And it's just airborne noise. It's not noise that's structural born. So if you have a, someone with high heel shoes and you're worried about the STC from, from, one floor to another in a condo, and you have someone with hard shoes tapping around. We're now dealing with impact insulation. It's a, it's a different issue. This is sound transmission class, and what that's looking at is, or to test it, you take a loudspeaker, you blast a lot of noise in one room, you measure that noise, then you go up to the other room, either upstairs or next door, measure the noise, you do a room correction reverberation time calculation and measurement, but really you're just measuring the noise in the source room, measuring the noise in the receiver room, little correction, and then subtract it and say, oh, how much is that wall providing us? Uh, so the higher the STC, the better, the more effective the partition. And I have a little description here, I'll read through it. Uh, this is real rough, an STC of 30, Gives you normal speech can easily be heard and understood. 35, loud speech can be easily heard and understood. 40, loud speech can be heard but not really understood. 45, loud speech is audible but muffled. 50, loud speech is difficult to detect. An occasional word might be understood. And I can guess which words those are, the real loud, uh, okay. And then 55, Loud speech is not audible. And so when we're dealing with 50 and above, it's high quality construction in general. Low end, 30, 35, it's more of an office setting, um, not as high quality. And then these are tested. There's an ASTM standard, EE336, and it's called an FSDC, a field sound transmission class measurement. Uh, that's it. Please let me know if you have any questions about this. That wraps up episode number 10. Next episode, what are we going to be talking about? Next episode, we will be looking at, here we go, HUD standard. All right, that's a pretty good standard to talk about. Thank you very much for listening to the Sound Noise Acoustics Engineering Podcast. I'm Bill Holiday. We're sponsored by Sound Solutions, independent acoustical consultants, ssacoustical.com. Really appreciate any feedback. If you have any questions, anything you want me to address in the future, or questions about the past episodes, definitely contact me, leave a note. You can email me, bill at ssacoustical.com. Facebook, we're there, Sound Solutions, Twitter, uh, and then ssacoustical.com, the site. You can call me, 520-979-2213. All right, take care. Thanks a lot. <laughs>